Hello and welcome, PML fans. I'm your host, Admin Joe here, and with me is Josh Reisinger. Yep. Right now, um, I'm going to be using his analysis and Stewart's analysis to kind of break down how they graded the teams and how they think the season will go for these teams so far. So we can go ahead and start with Josh's first pick of his grading ranks. Yeah, so um, the the best team, I think, um, out of all of this, it, it really wasn't that difficult. Um, not I'm saying that to encourage the trainer uh, for the Neo Kings and not to discourage the other trainers. Um, but this is just like a really solid team, like a lot of reliable Pokemon top to bottom. There's a lot of speed, bulk, and power. Um, a really nice tight balance and just just real really everything you need on a team is there plus um just like Cinderace is a great first pick there's a lot of sweeping potential there's a lot of defense on his team which i really like uh, i think really i only have like small negatives for it i i gave i gave it an a plus so there's very little room for um flaws there but um there i said there's there's not really a great switch in for offensive poison types um which the reason that's not a huge deal is because poison is one of the least threatening offensive types in the game and um there's not a whole lot um there in this draft league either there's one poke i don't want to help anyone's team building or anything so i won't mention it specifically there's one pokemon i saw that could cause the Neo Kings problems, but um, I don't think we can outright beat it. It just the, his team has trouble switching into it. And then um, the only threatening setup sweeper, and this is just a small negative. Setup sweepers are not imperative on every team, but the only reliable or scary setup sweeper is Azumarill, but which is a very good one. Um, so so yeah, it's an A plus. Really, I most the the negatives are really mostly there. Just so it has negatives, but I think they did a really good job drafting this. No, oh, that's awesome. And I also wanted to ask, um, just out of my personal opinion, because I didn't really put any two cents into this. Yeah, uh, he did pick up Clefairy, which is normally a doubles mon. How do you think? Uh, that transcribes to singles here. I think Clefairy is a is decent for draft leagues. If, if really if there's like a, a fighting type or a dark type that is threatening, um, hold on, let me let me pull up his team exactly. Um, it, I think it's it's a little redundant. Um, with Azumarill, because Azumarill I know is primarily offensive, but um, uh, it it can take hits, and and he does have a primarily offensive team. I think Clefairy's real job is to sit there if it needs to, which I don't think is a bad thing, especially as a tier five. Um, I don't know if I would personally take it, but I don't think it's a necessarily a bad pick either. The only reason I find it as a good pick is uh, he did bring up that it does uh, give off reliable stealth rocks and it yeah. can heal the team up status and health wise. Yeah, yeah, that is that is true. All right, and then we move on to uh, Stewart's number one pick, and it is also the Needle Kings with the A plus. I will be filling in for him since he was not able to show up today to the stream. Well, the recording part of this. And I'm just pretty much going to read off what he wrote down here. Alright, so Stewart says, If this was a doubles draft team, this team would be ridiculously powerful. Bring five of the first six every week and probably win. But while this is a singles draft, this team is still a scary one to look at. Threats all across the board, great speed tiers, huge defensive options, sweepers, tanks, great coverage. Let's not forget Libero Cinderace too. Yeah. Put that in parentheses. <laughs> I, wrote, I wrote where there's a Cinderace, there's a way. There's a way. So. Oh, yeah. 
that thing's been a beast and everything I've yeah. used it for. And then um, he put, uh, the pressure on the team builder is immediately obvious. Two quality EV light users, toxic spikes access, scrappy, allowing farfetch to hit ghost types with its fighting type moves, defog mandibuzz, belly drum azu, cinderace. In fact, one of the only weaknesses I, I can see is only having one flying resist. And he put weaknesses in quotations. Yeah, I, I like that he mentioned that. I, I didn't see flying as a huge issue for this team, but flying resist will be a running theme in my reviews. <laughs> so just spoiler warning for that. Yeah, the flying resist coming from the fighting type user. Yeah, yep. <laughs> I, I'm familiar. <laughs> and then he also put, but even then, uh, the defensive mons on this team will be able to take the neutral flying hits perfectly fine as far as draft goes. This is a great team. Danny made a great use of his position at first pick. Obviously with the A+. Plus. And then we move back to um, Josh for your number two pick. So my number two pick is your team. Um, I think this was a solid pick. The biggest, the biggest issue I have with it, I kind of mentioned it, before um, uh, we started recording is just keep it a buck with you, not really sure what you were doing with that first pick. Um, like, I know you said you wanted Shell Smash, but uh, if you wanted an offensive water type, you had Dracovish right there, um, which is a very scary Pokemon, especially in singles. But you, um, you have, like, very similar pluses as um, the Nidokings, with uh, you have good speed and bulk. I the thing that was the biggest plus for you, I think, is that I think you have the most flexible team building team. Like I think you can do a, do a lot of different things. Like I think you can do um, some balance balance team, um, bulky offense, and even like just like balls to the wall offense. I th I think really. Um, Stall is like the is like the side of the spectrum that it doesn't quite reach, but everything from there, uh, this team kind of touches on, which I think is cool. It um, uh, it kind of makes team building against difficult, and also I don't think there's one um, glaring hole in it. So I think it's just a solid team, and like I said. Um, the the first two picks I think could have been better. I know Charizard's your favorite Pokemon, so I won't critique you for that. I know <laughs> Gen Water Gen Oneers got to stick with their Gen One mods. I'm not a Gen Oneer. I will say. That. <laughs> um, and then I just said like overall, nothing jumps off the page as immediately threatening. Um, like it, there's not one thing like like every other team. Um, there's, like, I think there's, like, one Pokemon there's, like, okay, we really have to prep hard for that. Um, I think I think there's a lot of Mons on your team that could be scary and a lot of, like, versatile Mons that could fit in a lot of different situations. Um, but nothing that immediately jumps off the page is, like, immediately threatening to me. But overall, I gave yours an A-. minus. It was a really solid draft. Yeah, and I will add on to the Blastoise pick. I know it's uh, kind of... A redundant pick since I picked Charizard right after. Mm -hmm. um, I know I said Blastoise is a good shell smasher, but I mainly picked it because uh, the two tier twos that I wanted, which were Charizard and Lycanroc, yeah. both have a ground weakness and an electric, well, not really an electric, weakness, a ground weakness for sure, which mm -hmm. I know Blastoise, I can build it bulky enough to take those hits. Yeah. And really, Blastoise is more of a cushion for my Tier 2 picks because I feel like I'm going to be doing more damage with them anyway. Yeah, that's fair. But, yeah. But you never know. Maybe I'll get cheeky and just shell smash Blastoise turn one. And yeah. I mean, else. it... it um, it's shell smash plus Dynamax could be... could be a really powerful thing. So, it, it's not all bad... It's just not what I would have picked right there. but Yeah, I feel you on that. And then um, we'll go ahead and move on to uh, Stewart's pick for number two. And he also picked uh, my team with a regular A, not an A-. minus. 
and he had a lot to say about my team picks. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and read off what he said. He put a team from a seasoned drafter, strong fire water grass core. Joe has got many of his favorites, including Charizard and Lycan Rock D, which he knows like the back of his hand and are extra strong weapons in his hands. Fast electro type is always handy and a thick dragon in Gudra is a bonus. Lyperd is annoying, and Rhyperior and Dusnor can be threats in the right circumstances. Berserker provides a good dragon resist in, a, in, in another team without a fairy type, while also being an offensive presence in its own right, and I can see it coming to a lot of games. Blastoise is scary with its ability to shell smash, although in this team, I see it being needed more in a defensive capacity, especially as a team's primary hazard remover. Charizard isn't going to have a move slot for defog in most builds, plus a four times weak to rock itself, heavy duty boots notwithstanding. He put that in parentheses. Mm. And then he put, um, Belly Drum Charizard is always a threat, and as usual, it's a great candidate for Dynamaxing in his team. The Chartreuse are another team with a big speed tier difference. Only Blastoise and Gujar are really sitting at a moderate speed tier. The others are very fast or very slow. Whether other teams will be able to exploit these differences remains to be seen. But it could mean a lot of Mons get to run adamant modest if they're not going to outspeed something anyway. Overall, the second best team of the draft in my opinion... And with Danny, it shows the advantage of having the will pick in drafts, even if it means being the last pick in round one. No coincidence, they are the teams to beat in this draft. Like it. I like I like that he mentioned um, one of my favorite things. This is going to sound super trivial and small, but one of my favorite things about draft leagues is that I can use adamant and modest natures sometimes. Mm-hmm. Like I feel when I when I'm playing ladder or um or like online VGC and stuff, I feel like jolly and timid is like my only options. But I I do like that if you know specifically what they bring, what specifically what you have to outspeed, being adamant and moss just feels nice. Yeah, and that's why I do like a draft more than playing the ladder. Yeah, because um I I really liked a Dragapult set with my adamant set. Oh, yeah. And even though it's fast as hell, if someone else brings another Dragapult, you really had to have Sucker Punch for coverage on it, because yeah. if not, you were going to go down. Yeah. But I really do appreciate that he saw the fact uh, that he would see uh, Blastoise being used more defensively on my team. So yeah, that, that is true. That was pretty cool that he saw that. And shows that he's pretty good at team building against me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, and then we can move on to your pick for. Oh, sorry. Now we can move on to your pick for your third ranking. Yeah, I pick uh, the Rising Raichu, which I think is a super cool name. Uh, uh, I gave I gave them a B plus. Um, that that's the kind of the theme of the top three. Um, kind of if this like shows my thought process is just having good stat balance. That's, that's something I've said about um, three, like um, it has bulk. It has, it, it could have more speed, um, but uh, the attack power and bulk um, can be decent covers for that. Um, that, that is one of the biggest negatives I have about this team is that it is it is slow. I think that's the biggest thing that puts it behind um, the other two teams. Uh, is that what is there? So they um, uh, original Raichu is their fastest Pokemon. I believe that's base one ten speed, and then nothing really nothing really beyond moderate speed from there. Which um, Stuart said the last one fast fast electric types are always useful, um, and he does have speed options on here, um, such as like Venusaur if um, it were to get if he were to get the sun up, 
or Toga Kiss with um, the flying max move to boost the speed. Um, but it also has good tight balance, a lot of setup, nasty plot Toga Kiss, nasty plot Porygon, um, nasty plot Raichu. Um, Comfy and uh, Phalanx, like uh, just a lot of a lot of good setup. Drapion also, um, and just a, again, just solid mons top to bottom. There's no really obvious weak link, weak link here. Um, another another critique I have of it is there's not a lot in the form of hazards or hazard control. Their only good hazard control is Zatu. Um, which is pretty easy to prep for, and then their own—I believe their only stealth rocker is Gigalith. Yes. I yes. Okay. Um, yeah. So the, their options for getting stealth rock up are Gigalith, which is very slow, very tauntable Pokemon, or Zatu coming in and magic bouncing stealth rocks away. Um, so he, he's really going to, um, I think it, I think it's really easy for an opponent to get him in a losing battle with, um, hazards and that could become a problem. Um, but I think, I think he has enough, um, balance and variety that he could plan around that. And, and the last thing, I think if someone brought a really bulky team, that Togekiss specifically could not handle, this team would have a really hard time breaking it. Um, Togekiss is a real solid wall breaker um, with just nasty plot plus good coverage plus that flinch chance. Outside of that, there's no real great wall breakers on this team. So uh, that... that that could be problematic, and that that's why I dropped it below A. Um, that that's the biggest reason is that it just there's no real immediate power here, other than Porygon Z, um, which, which is a good option, kind of a steal at where he got it. Um, so solid team, um, definitely has its flaws, but I gave it a B plus. Okay, well I heard a lot of negatives on the Wallbreaker set, and um... I mean, obviously he has bulk to make up for that, so he can actually yeah, set up. Yeah. But um, it seems like uh, the wall breaker part is going to be a real big issue for him. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, you gave him a B plus, so he still ranks above third. Maybe Aaron's ranks a little higher on your list, but we'll give you a chance on that in a second. While I'm going to go ahead and just cover the rising right shoes, so we're pretty much talking about the same team. Okay. Um, Stewart actually ranked it at number six with the B minus. So he's still in the B's, but B minus nonetheless. Okay. And he put here another team without a steel type, but the advantage Devin has over Timothy. So I think that's why he ranked him over Timothy. Mm -hmm. Um, is that he has dual fairies to deal with. With those pesky dragons. Magic Bounce Zatu is underrated, has a control, also has Defog. Mm-hmm. But overall, the Raichu are not overly weak to hazards anyway. Porygon Z and Phalanx provide Omni Boost threats. Um, does does Porygon Z still provide. How does Porygon Z Omni Boost anymore without Z moves? I'm not sure. I'd have to ask him on that. But I, I don't know that Porygon Z can still Omni Boost, but Phalanx, yes. Phalanx still can. Yeah, Phalanx can for sure, but then it can't switch out. Right. Um, so we'll see how that actually helps the team there. And then he continues with. Togekiss has both offensive and defensive merits, provides a winning threat every game, and can defog if needed. Umbreon is a real pain for anyone trying to take it down. Gigalith for Ox, no electric immunity, but enough resistances that it shouldn't be an issue. Likewise, several mons are weak to fighting, but with a clawed resistance to Tog- in Togekiss and fat mons like Venusaur, it's not going to be an issue either. Really good speed tiers with reasonable spacing between each mon. 
Not huge type diversity. Lacks a good fire type and water type, which is rarely seen in drafts. I can see that being exploited by teams with powerful Pokemon of those types. The team does have a good offensive defensive split, however. Any enough threats. Uh, any enough threats. Okay. Any enough threats to be contenders. I'm not sure what he meant by that, but that's how he wrote it. It's probably probably he forgot to backspace a word. Yeah. Um, and then he continues with the last sentence. Not the best team, but not the worst team either. So he sits at a pretty six with a B minus rating. Sounds like he pretty much had the same ups and downs as I did. It just it sounds like he took the downs more significantly than I did. Yeah. Which is fair. I think that's I'm the same with one team in particular. I'm really curious to hear his um, review for one of the teams, but we'll get there. But yeah, look, uh, Togekiss all rate always provides a chance to win, no matter um, what the team is around it. So, so overall, um, I think this team, if it's used right, could could be really scary. Oh, yeah. I really love Togekiss. I actually used it in my most recent draft, and it certainly got me out of a bunch of holes. Yeah. But um, it is uh, kind of annoying to get working since it has that 80 speed stat. Yeah. So we'll just have to see how he works that out with his tier one pick. Yeah. All right. And then you can move on to your number four pick with the Oakland Aarons with the B-plus rating. Yeah. So this is this is pretty much tied. Um with the last team, my biggest plus, and this is a huge plus, especially looking at um, the other teams and how they handle this. But he has Rain plus Dracovish, which hits absurdly hard. I saw um, towards the beginning of the generation, I saw a screenshot um, of a Dracovish one hit KOing a Toxapex from full. And the situation was it was a choice band Dracovish in the rain. Like um, one of my favorite YouTubers, PokeAmmD, he says that Dracovish is not a Pokemon; it's a move, and it's a really powerful <laughs> move. And so, uh, so Dracovish is just like I I don't know I don't know what like I'm at a loss for how and. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, this team did draft all of its Pokemon last, I, is, if I'm correct. Yeah, he did. He wasn't so, at the draft, so he got yeah. skipped until later. So for that reason, it's kind of obvious that some people are not prepped for Dracovish. Um, that is something they will need to get on because I don't know if there's a water immunity. It, like Dracovish literally could one-hit KO every single thing in this draft league right now. So that that was an awesome pick by him, and kind of kind of another same plus. It's just it's bulky. Rotomo, I love Rotomo. Um, Hippowdon is solid, um, solid stealth rocker um, with Colossal as that option as well, um, and just yeah, hard hitter. Rotomo is also a hard hitter. Um, Lamar can get out of hand. Braviary is a good option against uh, against this draft league as well. Flying flying stab with fighting coverage um, is something that actually uh, a lot of teams will have issues with um, based on initial drafts, based on their initial draft teams. Um, so that was also a really solid pick. He got that as his very last pick. So that was a good that was a good one. Um, biggest negative, uh, once again, very slow. Um, this one, even slower than, I'm looking at it, there's no base 100 speed Pokemon. Rotom Mo, unless, unless Orbeetle's faster than I think it is. No, it's pretty slow. I think it's like, uh, in the 70s. Okay. I can look I have, that up yeah. real quick while you continue. Really use Orbeetle. Yeah, so Rotomo is like a middle speed tier Pokemon, and I'm pretty sure it's the fastest one on this team. Uh, so, I, like I said, um, 
like he's got he's got Dracovis, <laughs> and so so it's that's a like a way bigger plus. Like all my pluses and minuses are not created equal. That is a really big plus. Um, but a really big minus is that this team is very slow, and also he has no not even a dragon resist. There's not a single Pokemon on his team that even resists Dragon, and I think that uh, gets into kind of what Stuart kind of alluded to. It sounds like he noticed that there's a lot of teams with no Steel types. Yeah, this says no Steel type. It has no Fairy type, um, and so it, if if a Dragon type got out of hand, then that could pose problems for this team. It'd be really hard to deal with. And but, I just looked it up. Uh, Orbito actually has a 90 base speed. Okay, so the least threatening Pokemon on his team is kind of fast, so that's good. <laughs> uh, my, my opinion on the team being slow has not changed. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that overall, like, I think this is a really scary team. I really like the Pokemon on his team, and I really like what it, the game plan and the um, kind of um, archetype he's going for here. Uh, just big, dragon resist doesn't exist, and it's slow. But um, I think every every game is winnable with this team. So B plus, just as a reminder, is what I gave it. Well, um, before I read off uh, Stewart's thing, um, I think uh, he chose a lot of mid tier, a mid a lot of mid speed tiers because um, Orbito is kind of fast, and it does get sticky webs. Mm. Oh, um, good good point. And it does get Calm Mind, so it can beef up that 80 based uh, special attack. And it also gets a bunch of, uh, it gets all the screens and it gets U-Turn as well. So, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm guessing it's like one of, it might, he might use it as a solid lead to kind of beef up his team and yeah. get Sticky Webs up. So he, so he's got Rain plus Dracovish plus Sticky Web. Yes. Wow. So, and even with that, um, we're going to go ahead and move on to Stewart's grading of it. And he actually has the Oakland A-Runs in 8th place with a C. Wow. So, I'm going to go ahead and read off his reasoning as to why that is. He starts off with saying, Dual weather is always an interesting choice for a singles draft. But the fact that Timothy got the two important pieces of his rain team, Dracovish, Politoed, and Politoed, Politoed, and fat enough to set rain multiple times, and will allow Dracovish to hit vicious rains as many times as possible. Whether strong jaw or swift swim, Dracovish is a huge threat and one that you will need to prepare for. Forgot Simply, about swift swim. Yeah. And simply having a resist is generally not enough, as several resists are still too hit KO'd by banded strong jaw fish's friend. However, on the surface, outside of those, on the outside of those two, there isn't a whole lot going on. Hippo is great defensively, gives the sand ship damage, and provides a good stealth rock option, but doesn't make much sense otherwise. The two fire types are a niche option. That can cause issues if they get going, which is why I think Orbeetle comes in. Wait, did I miss something? The two fire types are niche options that can cause issues if they get going, which is where I think Orbeetle comes in. As with the Tyranitars, I get a whiff of Trick Room with this team. Pokemon like Turtonator and Beware are strong, but are often stifled by their respective speeds. Rotom provides good volt switch support and most of the other support options that Rotom gives uh, that Rotom forms give a team. Lack of both fairy type and steel type means no dragon could be an issue. No poison type means toxic spikes could be a great against the Aerons. Malamar needs several boosts to be threatening and gets bopped by even weaker bug attacks like U-Turn. Numerous defog rapid spin options means hazards aren't going to be the worst thing ever, but I feel like a team with uh, a team which is well prepared for Dracovish will feel pretty good regards to the rest of the team. So basically, he's saying the only uh, 
thing he has going for him is Dracovish. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's probably true. And and I'm sure once people are matched up, they will make some sort of change to deal with that. And so in that sense, I agree. Um, but in another sense, what I'm looking at right now is a league where literally every single Pokemon gets one hit KO by Dracovish. Yeah, I, can, I see that as well. Unless I do see so some I missed. Um, you know of a Steelers who have Quagsire, which does get water absorb, which is kind of an inferior ability, but could be a niche option. Yeah, especially, especially in draft. Uh, those little niches actually pay off big, yeah, big dividends. Yeah. So I'm going to move on to the next. Yeah, we'll go ahead and move on to your number five pick. I believe it's the same for both of y'all. Okay, yeah, the uh, Toronto Tyranitar. Um, I think this is this is another um, good team. Um, I think th- these this is where um, I think my pluses and minuses start to get a little more balanced um, with like the next three maybe. Um, Grimstarl, um, I really like that. Grimstarl provides team versatility by itself. Um, it has a really scary screen set um, and a really scary bulk up set. Um, I was actually helping someone test for a draft league uh, just last week. He used a bulk up Grim Snarl, and it just, I, I had no way of dealing with it because I um, expected some sort of screen set, which kind of brings up if you prep for one, the other one becomes really dangerous, and vice versa. Um, so I like all that that can bring to the team. He's got solid bulk. It, it, it is a bulky team. He has switch-ins to a lot of things. I'm looking at Dewblade, um, Hitmontop, Grinsnarl, Reuniclus, Seismitoad. Seismitoad also, another Dracovish answer. That's probably that's probably the most reliable one you'll get. Um, so that, that is solid. That, that honestly is a plus in itself. Um, He's got some priority options with Dewblade and Grimmsnarl, um, as well as a, a bunch of um, reliable setup sweepers. Obviously, I've talked about Grimmsnarl. Trick Room Reuniclus can be problems. Even without um, Trick Room, Reuniclus can cause problems. Ninetales gets Nasty Plot plus Sun. Um, and Dewblade, I think, is very underrated in its sweeping ability. Uh, just because it's so hard to kill um, if it has if it's got its if I light and um, it's got shadow sneak and sword stance minus is again um, it is pretty slow um, it's got it's got heliolisk another fast electric type that that is fast nine tails has, is decently fast sigilith is probably probably the highest you'll get in like a mid speed tier um, which that that is the in speed but it's it's scariest Pokemon are relatively slow so his first few picks um, kind of like the core of his team um, to provide a lot of speed uh, it is uh, really weak to flying types its only real answer is Dewblade, um, which is a solid answer. Um, and just, but just kind of like to make matters a little worse, flying types are generally pretty fast, uh, which could cause problems for his team. Uh, but yeah, like, like I said, the pluses and minuses are pretty balanced here. Um, I think he has a lot of potential. This is, this is another team. I think this team could win any game, um, if it's prepped right. And, um, I gave it a B. Yeah, you gave it a B, and um, I think if we move on to Stewart's, he also gave it a B. So, solid B for mm-hmm. Morgan by both analysts. But I will say, um, I noticed y'all both uh, put a big emphasis on Trick Room, and uh, when we were doing the draft, Morgan says he really doesn't think he will utilize Trick Room as much as we think he will. Okay. But... um. We'll see if he changes his mind after he watches this video. <laughs> <laughs> so he didn't. Uh, Stewart didn't have much to say. 
but he gave it a solid B, and this is what he says. Morgan has compiled a team full of potential combinations. The Cheeky Sun team in the last few picks, parentheses, solar power heliolisk, anyone? Good point. Um, and then he goes on to saying, uh, several fantastic trick room options, parentheses, watch out for greed and under, underrated in trick room, close parentheses. Two water immunities, bring rain and or swift swim at your peril. Um, then he goes on to say, Grim Snarl is hugely versatile, one of the premier pranksters users in the game, while also being immune to it. Dual screens, bulk up, fantastic stab combo, access to fake out, so many options. Then he has rapid spin access, thanks to Hitmon Top, Defog, Sigilift, another option. Overall, quite a slow team. Healer list at 109 and Ninetales at 100 topping out. But considering Chlorophyll Vileplume is an option, plus the overall feel of the Tyranitars being a trick room team, I think the speed tiers can be mitigated. I, in saying that there are several mons that can function outside of Trick Room 2, so it is not as one-dimensional as it might first appear. And that's all he has to say on that. Yeah, sounds like we were... That's probably the most... Other than um, the very first one, very top one, the Neo Kings, it sounds like we're in the most unanimous agreement um, with that one. Like, has, has some versatility, has an obvious go-to um, with Trick Room, but does not necessarily rely on it. Yeah, I feel you. So, it's my next pick was uh, the Unova Steelers, which um, the name is an automatic letter grade deduction. <laughs> Bill Brown. You on that. Um, but just all jokes aside, uh, I agree in, in a good way, not in a making fun of him way, just like cracked up at the first four picks. Like this dude just like, what is the most threatening thing on the page? That <laughs> one is the one I want. Like, you got Hydreigon, which is a nasty plot, setup sweeper. Alakazam, as of now, is a nasty plot, setup sweeper. Gengar is a nasty plot, setup sweeper. <laughs> and then Magnazone is just, uh, just a really, really good situational, like, glue Pokemon that I really like. Um, that, that is a, that's just, like, a big plus. This 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 plus is for me is kind of similar to the Dracovish one. Uh, it's just like his top four are so scary, um, and any any one of them um, could really provide problems. And um, Hydreigon's a pretty versatile mon. You can run a lot of different sets on it, and so it doesn't necessarily even have to rely on any sort of nasty plot or anything. Or necessarily even a special attack, but its special attack is obviously much superior. Um, I what else did I put this? Yeah, but oh yeah, the it's kind of something I touched on already. Um, is that the top four are not only wall breakers, but the top three can also set up. Alakazam got a lot. Um, this generation, and he kind of got it as a steal for Tier 2 because it now has Nasty Plot. And this team, I just think, will always have a puncher's chance. You know, like, no matter where they are, um, it, if they have those hard hitters in there, they'll have a chance. That being said, um, the team is pretty weak um, to flying types. Like I said earlier, um, Flying plus fighting is pretty scary for this uh, for this draft league. His only flying resist being Magnazone, which is weak to fighting. Um, it, it it that that could be a problem. Um, there there really isn't much of a switch in, and um, not great special tanks either. Um, so something like, actually, I'm not going to say that. I'm not helping people prep. But there are a few Pokemon that could that could cause problems for this team come to mind immediately. 
Um, also, sucker punch for this team. I don't know how to like like a strong sucker punch um, could really shred this team. Um, so just or just dark types in general um, could really get out of hand. Uh, and another thing is that I think just being kind of the hyper offense that it is, um, if it gets back on its heels, I think it could fall apart quickly. I think it relies on keeping other teams back on their heels, which is not is not a strategy I look down upon, but that is an inherent flaw that if you can't get them back on their heels, it's gonna you're gonna have a hard time. Um, and the biggest, most glaring weakness to me is that physical attackers pretty much don't even exist on this team. Yeah, I noticed um, that as well. Yeah, like like you got Cinescorch um, can hit hard, but it's not particularly threatening, especially in a draft league. Um, it's just got huge weaknesses, and it's pretty slow. Um, the other physical attackers could be Hydreigon, who, like I said earlier, it's special is just far superior. Obviously, it's a draft league, so um, uh, whatever whatever works for the set, I guess. And then your other option is Miltank and Delibird, which Miltank not is just it's not used. It's a solid Pokemon, but not not for doing damage. And Delibird is Delibird. <laughs> So, so just, yeah, just um, physical threats, I guess I should say, just really um, don't exist on this team. Um, so I'm going to give it a B-. Um, I said I, it's a letter grade deduction for the name. I'll give it a letter grade increase because I love the first four picks. <laughs> uh, just, just like, just as, as a cumulative, the first four picks I think are great. I just I love the heart behind this team, but it does have it does have some flaws. Like I said, it has a puncher's chance. This is another one that I I think any battle could be won, um, but it has it does have uh, a couple glaring weaknesses, and so I gave it a B minus. Yeah, and I also give it a letter grade up for uh, the promo video he put out on the PML page as well. <laughs> mm, yeah, that's that's good. It's good. That's that's fair. And we're back. Uh, obviously, you didn't realize we took a break because I paused the recording, but Stuart is now jumping in with us, and he will be taking back over his duties as analyst and talking about his sixth pick here. Hello. So right now we're on so uh, Unova Steelers. Yeah. Unova Steelers. All right. So I'll bring them up. Yep. So, um, the first thing I noticed with this team was about how fast it was, um, particularly in compared to other teams. Um, the first four picks are pretty good. Like you can't get probably a better four attacking Pokemon in one team. Um, but there's a huge gap between those ones and then the, the bottom three, which are you know 30, 35 speed. Um, you know, everyone's surprised at how fast Bill Tank is, but back to as it is, um, got lots of lots of threats individually, but I just couldn't see a lot of team synergy, which was my problem with this team. Um, you know, apart from Delibird, you got no hazard removal, and you don't want to be bringing Delibird every week. Luckily, outside of Center Scorch, there's not not much that's actually destroyed by rocks or other hazards other than Delibird itself. But yeah, I mean, you know, you got your you got your Volt Turn core of Magnezone and Hydreigon. I'll be interested to see what happens with this team because, but like I said, individually, lots of uh, huge threats. But whether it gels as a team, I have my doubts, to be honest. Yeah. Now, now you mentioned Deli Bird. Um, that's something I really didn't particularly notice, just because like a, a hazard weakness doesn't particularly jump out to me. But if Deli Bird, if you're running, it's really only viable set. Um, rapid Spin could even miss if uh, if you're running a hustle. Exactly right. Hustle, yeah. And yeah. We're also missing the big picture on Deli Bird. It is 50% weak to rocks. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, someone's going to have to use those heavy duty boots 
<laughs> Senescorch is objectively better Pokemon than Delibird. It was certainly um, a surprise pick uh, during the draft. And when everyone was trying to ask him, what surprise is there to Delibird? All he <laughs> said was, you will see. <laughs> All right. Wow. Here we go. Well, that's what I look, I look forward to. I look forward to finding out because, yeah, I mean, got some. You got to throw in a maxi stream and then be faster than everything and still hit like a piece of paper. I don't know. Yeah. All right. Want to move on to the my next pick? Oh, let's not forget. Um, Deli Bird does get hustle. It does. But yeah, Stuart ranks uh, the, the Univ Steelers with the C plus at number seven, and now we move on to uh, Josh's seventh pick. Yeah, my my seventh pick is the Persian Prowlers. Um, so like I said earlier, um, that this is I, I don't think this is a bad team. Like it, it's the second second to last pick. Um, I think there's definitely upside here. Um, something um, that at first I was like. How does this work? And, and I tried to kind of see it um, through his perspective, and it, it kind of won me over that the Gyarados plus Cloyster could be really scary because Gyarados and Cloyster are both individually really scary setup sweepers that both have the same weaknesses. Um, Agreed. So, so it, if – same weaknesses, but and also the same checks. Um, but I think I think where that could be a plus is if like hyper offense kind of relies on something trying to break through the team, and then the next thing coming in and just overpowering it. And I think that could be something that works out here um, if one of them sets up and if it weakens. If it weakens the immediate checks to one or the other, the other one could be too much um, for the other team to handle. Um, so I think I think that there there's obvious downsides there to the fact that they um, have the same weaknesses, but um, it could work into their favor at the same time. I think as far as just um, the drafting itself. Uh, he stole Alolan Marowak. And like Alolan Marowak is one of the hardest hitters in the game, um, at least non Ubers, and um, he he really just stole that. It complements Gyarados and Cloyster really well too. Um, it it hits um, a lot of their checks really well, and um, if it's running lightning rod also has that electric immunity, which really helps. Um, sticky webs on shuckle is beneficial to this team as well. It really does look like he's, he's going for a much more offensive team. Like even, even his main um, walls or tanks, um, tang growth and ride on are also relatively offensive Pokemon. So um, I, I respect that. Um, this is another team kind of relies on keeping the other team on their heels. The other team it could get out of control if they get back on their heels. Um, so I see, I see the upside here. This team could, though, get picked apart pretty quick by strong special attackers, especially if the special attacker is fast. Um, uh, there, there's not much of a special wall on this team really at all. Like Gyarados, other than Shuckle itself, um, obviously Shuckle is very bulky, but um, it doesn't provide much of a threat to return. It just kind of sits there. Um, but outside outside of Shuckle, it's best real special wall is Gyarados, um, which you don't really want to rely Gyarados for its defensive purposes. You want it to sweep. Um, not a lot of good immediate speed, um, this is something that me and Stuart seem to agree on, that this draft in general, uh, there's some pretty slow teams in this draft. There, there's, um, there's good potential speed on this team with the setup, but no good immediate speed, which 
could cause an on an over reliance of sticky web. And I just the last thing I said I've kind of touched on already. If Gyarados and Cloyster can't break through, there's not a whole lot of opportunity left. Um, yeah, I agree. And so, so I think um, based on the upside, I'm giving this like a solid C plus, not not like a disrespectful C plus, like like a solid C plus. Like I I can see this working, but there there are some glaring weaknesses and probably a few more weaknesses than there are positives for it. I will ask um, before Stuart continues with his um, on the Lola Marowak um, you, I know you said it hits pretty powerful, probably mm -hmm. harder than most Ubers, but um, don't you think it's kind of one dimensional with uh, the item obviously it's going to be bringing Thick Club and well, what, so many the, knockoff users in the draft able to get rid of that item and pretty much hinder it. Really, the way you'll you're going to want to use a Lolan Marowak um, is just really as a revenge killer. Like like the best way to use it is um, to bring it in free into a situation where nothing can switch into it. And and those situations are more frequent than it would seem. Um, Fire Ghost is a really good dual stab, and the beauty of um, Thick Club is that it gives you that double in attack without having any drawbacks whatsoever. Yes, knockoff could be a problem, and Alolan Marowak is definitely something that could prep for, but as the fact that he has his second to last pick, and it does complement his main core, I just think it's a really solid pick by him. That's fair. And um, even though you had it at seventh, uh, Stewart actually has it as the third best team in the draft. Yeah, I, I can see that. Yeah, I found it like just after Josh's uh, losses there, I realized how intimidate weak this team actually is. It's got so many physical attackers, and is Mr. Rhyme the only special one that I can see right now. But, uh, yeah, I mean, outside of Gyarados and Cloyster, I'm sure they're going to destroy a few teams this season. Uh, this, you know, they got a shared weakness to Electric, as you said, but, you know, Tangrowth resists, and Rhydon can be immune, and Marowak can be immune. So, I mean, if they sort out the speed aspects, and I think bringing Shuckle every week is probably going to be what's going to happen. Um, you know, unless you're prepared for Shuckle, you can't destroy in one hit anyway, so it's almost going to be guaranteed steps every week. But then you've got to think about, you know, all the fake options this team has. I made a note in my analysis that there's just so much fake out on this team that first turn setups from other Pokemon on the other team are going to be almost impossible. Um, you've got Nuzzle on more Pico, you know, um, it's got Aura Wheel. I think for a last pick, that's pretty good. I haven't actually seen it used in draft before, but I've seen it battle, and you know it surprises some people. Um, yeah, the analysis on Marowak was good. I agree. It was a really good seeing the last pick. I don't know if I would have picked Toracat before it, to be honest, if it was still available, but if it was, you know, you can't go wrong with a round nine Alola Marowak. And as you say, now it gets Poltergeist, so yeah. Ghost, Week teams, Ghost Week teams are going to get destroyed by it. It doesn't have to rely on Shadow Bone, which is also a good move, but I think um, Poltergeist is even better as a physical ghost move. Um, you know, Toracat's got its um, similar use to Incineroar. It's Incineroar Light. It has Intimidate and does all the things that Incineroar does within reason. Uh, I can just see, you know, maybe Mr. Mr. Rhyme's going to come along and do some making out and you know, stop other teams' screens and you know, it has rapid spin as well, which is a bonus for a team that you know has an ice type and that sort of thing. The fire types that don't want to switch into rocks, and you know Marowak can't run heavy duty boots, so it's going to need some kind of hazard control. But, but yeah, I I just felt this team taking away all the negatives. I feel like it's going to blow teams apart without them realizing. Like if, if Gyarados sets up, it can just tear through a team. If Cloyster sets up, it can tear through a team. So it's hard to prepare yeah. for both Pokemon if you don't have that strong electric type or you know someone that can 
put immediate pressure on, you know, intimidate, or it can use priority, or you know, if you're setting a lot of hazards or things like that, then before you know it, just mash cloister and we'll run through you, and then it's too late. And Gar Gyarados really does not. It doesn't take much for it to be able to set up. Uh, it, right. It's so bulky. It has great special defense, and it has intimidate if that's what you choose to run. Um, yeah. So Gyarados can like that. That's why I like um, the upside is good enough that I think it could be a decent team. So yeah, I just I think you know if you take away the fact that it's relatively slow, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. And so if they meant if they get that speed control every week, whether it be sticky web or other things, paralysis, then you know, I think they could go a long way in this uh, league. But once again, it remains to be seen. It remains to be seen. All right, and Josh is next with his eighth pick, with the lowest grade of both analysts giving. Yeah. So this this I want to establish this is a no hate zone. Um, this agreed, agreed. My, 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 opinion. my impartial opinion when I looked at this team. Um, I will start with the plus. This team is incredibly bulky. There's no, I don't care what team you have, this team is going to take forever to beat. Um, there's so many um, walls and checks um, on this team that uh, th this is going to be an annoying team to break through. That being said, I, I am kind of... Um, excited to hear what Stewart has to say about it, but I just I don't particularly understand what this team is trying to be. Um, it's I don't I don't see it's it's a really slow team with not an obvious trick room um, threat. Like most most trick room teams, you want slow Pokemon that are incredibly heavy hitters. The only one with immediate damage on this team as far as um, the slow Pokemon go is uh, Golisopod. Um, and I just, yeah, I don't see a lot of synergy on this team. Um, Gardevoir gets Trick Room. Trevenant, mm, I actually did not look into it. I don't know if Trevenant gets Trick Room or not. It does. It does get Trick Room. Okay, so that, that could be an option, but just again, like, it, it will have a hard time taking advantage of that Trick Room because his his Pokemon as a whole do not hit particularly hard. Um, the first picks, Corsola and Pukamuku, just, I don't know. Um, well, real quick, um, uh, before you continue, uh, I was at the draft, obviously, <laughs> but, yeah. uh, uh, he did pick uh, Trevenant and Serena, and he mainly picked Serena because he didn't really want to bring Trevenant to battles. So, oh, okay. I don't know how much he's actually going to utilize Trevenant and Trick Room with will -O -S and all that. Okay, so, yeah, I didn't figure, I think um, if I'm going to use this team, I wouldn't even use Trick Room. But um, just me, that's me trying to see what the synergy of this team could be. Um mm -hmm. I said just my biggest thing with this team is I don't see much of a win condition outside of yeah. Snorlax. Like, right. like Gardevoir, maybe. Talonflame if this was two generations ago. <laughs> but Snor Snorlax can get out of hand. Curse sets are, can be really scary. Snorlax is just obnoxious to try to beat. But outside of that, it's just like I, I don't know what – this team really wants to do. Um, obviously, I'm not the person who drafted it. If they can make it work, that's awesome. Um, the team's really weak to Ghost, um, which, again, Snorlax is yeah. the only Pokemon that can really handle it. And just overall, just way too dependent on Snorlax. Um, yeah. Basically, what Joe is saying is he knows he's not too good at singles, so mm -hmm. he wanted to try to draft the bulkiest team he could. Okay, that that's fair. That's fair. Snorlax, Snorlax is a good fallback Pokemon. Like it, it's kind of like Gyarados, maybe not to the extent of Gyarados, but in a way, it's kind of like Gyarados where it doesn't need much to be able to set up and sweep. 
Um, but again, it is just so Snorlax dependent with it's it being the only ghost immunity, um, as well as it being the real wind condition. And um, so I did give it a D, not a hateful D, a very loving D. <laughs> but, but I just I don't I don't know if, if this this Pokemon if this team say beats the best like the best team in the league the new what I think is the Nido Kings I think we can both uh, agree on that uh, I I don't know what will have to happen for that to take place that makes sense and that that's kind of how I see with with a lot of them well for um, this generation I will say there's only a 20 minute timer so that could play a mm, huge part in it. that is true you yeah, that was, <laughs> that was the first, first point I made it was about the timer <laughs> All right. Point I made it. Well time, yeah. And we move on to Stewart's position on the Umbreons. So uh, I can see this team winning matches. Don't get me wrong, but they're going to win it. Timer. I can't, like um, Joe said, I can't see it blasting teams off the park. I can't see it wearing teams down. Mm-hmm. All I can see is, you know, maybe stalling out until there's an opportunity for Snorlax to set up uh, and just run through a team that way, hopefully. But you only got 20 minutes. Pukumuku can come in and sponge a hit. <laughs> what are you going to do? Yeah. It doesn't have time to soak in toxic every Pokemon. Like, it doesn't have time to do its normal shenanigans, in my opinion. But you know, I was going to rate this team a C plus because I don't feel like I said I feel like it's going to win games and it's going to win games by the time of stall, whether that's intentional or not, you know that's up to the people involved. But I gave it an extra mark because I love Luxray, one of my favourites, underrated. Um, <laughs> if it had better speed, it would be you know tier electric type, but um, it doesn't. <laughs> it's just that's just a personal personal point there. So I gave it a B minus. I think that. Um, yeah, if he has a plan, then that's fine. If he decided that that's he wanted to draft for the fat team, then he'll be aware that time and wins and losses are just going to happen. And I personally don't find those very fulfilling, but you know, at the end of the day, a win's a win. And if he just beats a team down by taking the full 20 minutes and having more HP, then that's a strategy, and you can't totally shy away from it in this generation, unfortunately, with the time of the way it is. Um, so there's a good point made about being ghost week. I also think it's quite flying week. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I couldn't see... With this draft as well as being slow. Yeah. So, I mean, if you get a, a strong flying type in and it's just going to... Even even an average flying type, if it's got max airstream, it's going to knock something back. Um, you can't rely on Luxray to, to tank everything from flying types. Corsler and Pukamuku, you might survive one, but with, most things are going to be two at KO'd. By a good um, D Max Mon. Um, yeah. Talon Flame, Shadow of its former self. Uh, at least you can, it's probably a good D Max option. If you get those Max Airstreams off, it's got a high enough attack that you can hopefully run through some teams. But yeah, I just feel like with, with some good priority and you know, something with a good knockoff, a strong dark type, it's just gonna, this team's going to have massive, massive problems. Yeah, I can see lots that of, as well. Lot, yeah, lots of underrated, but like Gardevoir is situational, but quite often very good. You can bring it to a lot of matches. I've drafted it myself before. It's got lots of tech options, which are handy. Unfortunately, it's not really bulky enough to make use of some of them, but you know, it's it's there. Uh, Serena, underrated again. You know, it's a good grass type. I probably wouldn't have drafted Trevenant if I wasn't going to use it, but you got to pick something in that tier. You know, you got to try and fill in the gaps where you can. Uh, at least it is a ghost type. That's about all I can say about Trevenant. But yeah, I mean, I, I'm a fan of Galisapod. It's hampered by its ability, but you know, first impressions one of the best priority moves in the game, and it's got a massive enough attack, attack stat to use it. It's got priority coming out the wheels too. It's got liquidation. So you know, I'm a fan of Galisapod. But once again, if too many hazards are up, or if you're relying on it to sponge heads, it's not going to. So, um, yeah. It might get a surprise KO with first impression here and there, but 
yeah, overall, there are better teams. It's not the worst team, in my opinion, but yeah, I can see why you gave it a D. <laughs> All righty, guys. Well, I really appreciate y'all for taking y'all's time out of y'all's day to do this analysis video. And I am going to end it here with one question for each of you. Mm -hmm. Which four teams do you think makes playoffs this season? So I, I'm going to try to not be lame and just pick my top four. Maybe I will. Maybe I will. But here, let me let me look at all the matchups and stuff. So, Nato Kings, easily. Like, at, Nato Kings, to me, on paper at least, is the team to beat. Obviously, that's dependent on the trainer, but... Um, I will say this. Uh, the Nato Kings is friends with PokeMMD, and he did get a lot of advice from him. Whoa, Actually, that, changes, that changes it up. <laughs> Is that for real? Yeah, he is friends with them. I, he, he could, I couldn't get him to get PokeMMD to join this league. but You're lucky because this would not be a competition if you did. <laughs> <laughs> that That's dope, actually. So yeah. I, I would also say your team. Um, I, think, I think your two teams are um, for sure, and by you I mean Joe Zamora. The Tartruits. Um, yes, I think, I think those are for sure the two best teams. Um, I'm going to go, um, I think, I think people will have something to solve Draco fish by the time everything is said and done. So I'm not going to pick the Arons, even though I praise that so much. Um, I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with, um, the Tyranitars as well and the Persian Prowlers. All right. So That's my prediction. Those are Josh's four predictions for the playoffs. And Stuart? Uh, I agree with the first two for sure. I, You've struggled to find a better team in a draft than the Nether Kings as far as the just looking at the Pokemon that are involved in that team. You would struggle to find a better team. Um, I know you have got a great team as well. You've got lots of your favorite Mons. Um, I'm sure you've got a million strategies <laughs> in your head somewhere that are going to just blast teams. Yeah, you know I look we've forward to the a couple times. That's right. I look forward to the matches between you and Nido Kings because they're going to just be crackers. I mean, Blast Toys is just going to be, you know, I hope they blow Cinderace back. I want to see that. I look forward to seeing that. <laughs> um, I think the Steelers are going to be there or thereabouts. I rank them lower because I don't think they're going to be a consistent team. But there's no way that Nasty Plot High Dragon or something like that isn't going to destroy a team at some point. Um, that's just, you know, if you play enough Pokemon, you know that Nasty Plot High Dragon, if you give it a chance, it'll run you down. Yeah, I agree. And then I think, I'm going to say, between the, like, the, the Tyranitars, Prowlers, one of those two teams is going to surprise. One of those two teams is going to surprise, and I'm going to feel stupid about the rank I gave them. We but need one a for sure pick come. so I can make a poster later. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I'm, I'll say Tyranitars only because I know Morgan is a highly capable battler. Um, yeah, his team has lots of combinations. I feel like there's a lot a bit of synergy in that team to, than a lot of teams. I know it's a bit slower, but I think that he has got Trick Room in mind. Um, Greedent, he mowed me down with it in the league we just had. I think he's going to mow, me, mow people down with it again. It's surprising. I was surprised by how good it was. Um, yeah, so I'm going to play Tyranitas as my fourth pick. And uh, what were your picks again real quick, Josh? Prowlers, Charis, Kings, and who else? Uh, yeah, Nido Kings, Prowlers, Chartriots, and I believe I picked Tyranitar. Okay. So do we have three of four the same? Yeah. I think so. I didn't pick Tyranitar. That was excellently. No, no, yeah, I did, yeah, I did, yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. Well, I'll go ahead and do that poster later. And again, thank you guys for watching, and give a big thank you in the comments to our analysis team. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, see you guys.